Hi and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we'll be looking at variable sets, we'll look at what are they, why bother with them um, and how to create and apply them. Now we'll be expanding on an item I created in a previous video so if you haven't seen that just go ahead and check it out by clicking on the link in the description. So let's get started. So in my previous video, I created a catalog item for a BMW 3 Series. Now in that, I created three variables, um, name, seats, hands-free kit installed. So at that time, I didn't create a variable set for that. But what happens if we wanted name, that question, to be applied across multiple items? Well, if we did the same as I did on the previous video, that would mean we'd need to create that variable on multiple items multiple times. So what we can do is use a variable set. So a variable set is, is kind of a, a collection of variables, UI policies and or client scripts that can be built independent of the catalog item itself. So what that means is we can create one variable set with perhaps the person's name and then apply that very quickly and easily to multiple catalog items. And that reduces um, a lot of headache for administrators as well as having a consistent um, user interface for the end user. So let's take a look. So in our item that we created last time, we can see at the bottom here, this is where I created the variables. Now what happens if we want to put these in a variable set? So what we could do is we could come to variable sets, we could click new. Now variable sets have two different types. So you've got single row and then you've got multi-row variable set. So multi-row I believe was new in London version, very useful, very powerful. And I think I'm going to cover that in a separate video. So for now, we're going to click single row. So when we get to the variable set record, we can give it a title. So I'm going to give it requester, requester, requestor, we'll go for requester, details. And when I click tab, that's going to pre-populate an internal name. Now we can change that. Um, what's the point in internal name? Well, it means that within the client side scripting when the item's created, we can access this variable. Okay, and we'll cover that in a future video. On, on the right hand side here, we've got display title. Now if I click that, that means on the item itself, when viewed in the portal, it will display requested details. So we'll leave that ticked for now. We also have the option to change the layout. So we have three options here. One column wide, that will, if we have more variables within this variable set, more than one, they will be layered on top of each other. If we have two columns wide, either alternative or um, one side then and the other, they'll be side by side and then we set the order in how we want them to display. For now, we're gonna choose one column wide and we're gonna submit. Okay, so that's now applied our variable set, albeit completely empty, to our catalog item. Now let's add some things to this variable set. So in here, we're gonna add just like we did before. Now this is the same as adding a variable, albeit we're doing within a variable set. So the concept is the same. So we're gonna give this name variable set for now. And we can change that just so we can see the difference. And then the system name, we'll leave it at that. So for this, we're gonna leave this as a, a single line text, but we are gonna make it mandatory. Let's add another variable in there. So we click new. And we're going to add email address. And we're just going to call that 
vs variable set just so we can keep track and again we're going to leave that as a single line text so now we have two variables within our variable set so we perhaps want to give these an order And we can see while we're in this variable set we can see which items this is included within so at the minute this is only included within one item so let's go and see how that looks excellent so you can see here we have requested details that's the title that's displaying and we've got the name and we've got the email address now this is the variable I added on a previous video these are the variables within the variable set. So let's remove that name. Perhaps we don't need that. And perhaps we need the requested details at the top of the form. So we come back. Go to our item. On the variable section, the name we're going to deactivate. And this is starting at 20. So we probably need to give this an order of five. So it's an important thing to note here. So you can use a mixture in a catalog item between a variable set and variables. Um, why might you do that? A catalog item might have different labels. So you could use the same variable set, perhaps not display the title, but then use different labels across different items. And they both work together, variables and variable sets within the item. So you need to look at the order for both of them and kind of alternate between variables and variable sets to get the order correct. So for example, variable set is order number five. Then we come over to here. We have, this is inactive. So our next one will be 20, 30. If we had another variable set, we could have that as order 40 and so on and so forth. So let's go back to our item and refresh. Excellent. So we now just have one name field on, we have email address, we have seats, we have hands-free kit installed. Brilliant. So what happens if we want to change the layout? So let's take a look at this. At the moment we have one column wide, which looks like this, but perhaps we want them next to each other. So we do two columns wide. We go back and refresh our item we now have them side by side, taking up a little, little, a, a little less um, real estate from the screen there. So, okay, we've created one variable set. What happens now if we want to apply that to another item? Well, let's take a look at another item that I used in the previous demo. This is our Apple iPhone 6S, standard out of the box. At the moment, we have no requester details on there. So let's go and apply our new variable set. So we go in here, we would go to variable sets, into requested details, included in, edit, Apple iPhone 6S. We just apply that and we click save. If we select here, refresh, excellent. We now have our new variable set. But again, you can see that the order um, perhaps needs changing. So let's go ahead and do that. And again, look at the ordering between the variables and the variable sets. At the moment, we have our new variable sets of order 100, which is the same as the first variable there. Is this a replacement? So what we need to do is we can give this an order of 50, and that will make it first in the list. Excellent. So now that we have our variable set applied to two different items, if we need to make any changes to the variables within our set, 
we only need to do that in one place and then those changes will apply across all the items the variable set is within in our case these two catalog items now we can demonstrate that by perhaps doing two things here at the moment our name field is name underscore vs so we can change that to be just name and watch the change apply across the two items what we can also do is to explore a new concept within a variable set is to look at putting some validation around the email address field perhaps we only want to see values type within that field that have a at sign now I know that's not foolproof but I think it's good enough to show the concept okay so let's go and do that now so we go back to our variable set that we created now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to rename the name question now to do that I'm going to cheat a little and I'm going to do it from the list view so the other thing we want to do is put some validation around the email script the email field couple of client scripts we're going to click new and we're going to give our client script a name now you see here it says applies to so it applies to a variable set and the variable set it applies to is our request for details because that's where we're creating it from a couple of things we want to change here so we want to make the UI top type all and the type itself we're going to do an on change now on change of what so it then gives us a list of variable names on change of which field so we can only select a variable which is in our variable set now for this case it's the email address and then we can start typing our code If the value contains at, then we're going to put a message. Please a valid address. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to check to see whether this value has an at sign. If it doesn't, we're going to be a bit, bit naughty and we're going to clear that field. And then we're going to show a information box. Um, in fact, we're going to show an error box. We could be a bit nicer, but we're going to show a red error. Okay. I'm going to submit and we can go and look at those changes. So if we go back to our first item, here we can see our name VS has changed to name and the email address with no at sign. Please enter a valid email address. Now, that's great, but let's go and check that change has applied to our other item. Excellent. We have name instead of name underscore VS and email address. We have the same validation. So hopefully that, that shows you a little bit about variable sets, how we can apply them, how we create them, and what we can use them for. If there's anything you want me to expand on or different topics you want me to cover in future videos, please add to the comments below. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do just to give me some motivation to keep on going. And thank you all for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it.